I think that one of the major factors that will shape U.S.-China relations in the coming five years uh, will be uh, how effectively each country handles what is a core issue for both at this point in time. And that is, can they overcome uh, political obstacles to carry out the economic reforms that they desperately need to carry out? In the U.S., that focuses obviously on our fiscal problem, right? We all know we have to address it. We haven't agreed on how to do that. Uh, a huge question will be which president, with whatever Congress emerges from this election, will be able to reach a deal that actually puts us on a reasonably sound fiscal path as we go forward into the future. All, right? all of Asia is looking at that question. Our credibility in this region with our rebalancing toward Asia and all that kind of thing all hinges on that question. Because the big question is not, do we have the strongest military? Are we the smartest folks around? Do we have a great innovation system? Do we have great universities? The big question is whether we're going to shoot ourselves in the foot to the extent that this is not sustainable. Not sustainable politically, because we'll be in a defensive crouch, and not sustainable in terms of resources, because our economy isn't generating the resources we need. Right? And they're all looking at it. China has an equally large set of issues. In fact, I would argue larger on whether it can transition to a major set of sectoral uh, rebalancing within its own economy. Like us, they know what they have to do. They haven't had the political capital, the political will to do it. The question is whether the new leadership is going to be able to do that. Uh, if they can, they're going to be as dynamic and important in the region as they have been in recent years. And uh, frankly, I think uh, more open to being a good partner with the United States. If they don't, then our thinking about China internationally is going to have to change. Uh, and ironically, we've had this kind of disconnect to my mind. Uh, uh, the thinking about China internationally has not reflected much the domestic troubles that, they, that have grown there. So we've just assumed this is a country still roaring along, and this is the kind of challenge, and these are the opportunities to oppose internationally. While everyone focuses on China domestically is saying essentially, oh man, do they have problems, right? And boy, are they facing a difficult transition. We don't know whether they can do it or not. Implications for political stability and all that kind of thing. You get some nuanced differences, but nothing very fundamental. So, there, so the analyses of domestic haven't caught up with the analyses of China in the international arena. But China in the international arena, as for any big country, is overwhelmingly shaped by China domestically. Right? So on both sides, we have this issue. And frankly, what the underlying tensions in our relationship will be will be in no small part a reflection of your bets on how each of us will handle that domestically. I raise all that to say that one of the big bets that every citizen has to place if you're concerned about US-China relations, that kind of thing, is which American president will be more successful in forging the kind of overarching agreement that will put us on a solid fiscal path? Because that actually is probably more important than most of the campaign rhetoric that we've been talking about. 